this is the game that I wrote because I fucking hate investigative RPGs. So first of all, right. <laughs> I, I, I totally get it. it's an investigative RPG, but it's not part of investigative RPGs, the genre, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's uh, the anti biasin right? Uh, it's <laughs> at least that's what I'm trying to do. But anyway, it's like, um, I unfortunately cannot give you a English text right now because I'm developing it with an Italian friend of mine and we are getting ready to play test at the co a convention at the end of the week. So I have no fucking time this week to give you an English text. I'm, uh, not, interested. I'm not interested in text anyway. Oh, okay. Then I can just explain the thing to you. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty fine. Yeah, you're more interested in system and play and uh, actual play. Yeah, that, that's actually easier. Um, but in, in any case, the um, I guess the idea came out of um, I was having discussions with this guy um, online, and we were like fighting over like um, how you do investigation and in RPGs. And then like we became friends, and we played with each other, and we started to understand that we actually like, had like a lot of ideas in common. Um, and then uh, we're doing this convention at the end of the month, and he was like a few months ago, like, "Hey, I want to bring like um, investigative adventure." Um, and he was like running them using like a bastardized uh, custom system that was vaguely based on D&D, but like a D&D third edition, but it was essentially his own system in practice, right? And I had other ideas of like how to run it. So he's like, hey, like, do you want to write uh, the venture together? And then like you run it and then I run it. Um, and then we see how each person runs it, like whatever system you want to run it with, you kind of do your own thing. Um, so we started doing this uh, scenario um which is like i am a very avid reader of agatha christie um so i when i take when i say detective story i take it very seriously um and also partially inspired by the name of the rose if you have read that or the, or seen the film interesting um, enough, i was just thinking about it in detail and wondering if i wanted to reread it oh yeah for, do it it's really other, fucking good reasons, man yeah yeah the English version is not as good as the Italian, but it gets the job done. The translation, it gets the job done. Um, but um, anyways, uh, we had this this adventure that was taking form. And I guess adventure is not the right word, but it's a case. Essentially, it's set up as a backstory and then an explosive situation on top. So it's kind of like, this is why I'm saying the name of the rose, because it's like the... Um, there's an unfolding that will definitely go on. It's not a static investigation, right? There's like the characters are doing shit while you're trying to figure out what has happened, right? So it's really like things will come out. It's whether they come out as your knowledge and understanding of your player, the player character, or if they come out as NPC actions. And then you can get blindsided, but things come out, right? So this is first uh, the the, and then I, I'm like, well, I don't want like, and I start writing a system to play this adventure in, and this is how the thing kind of came to be. So I started modding like it's a bit of a weird hybrid between the pool and Cthulhu Dark, and it's mostly, I guess the DNA has has things of the pool, but um, okay. Let me yeah. get to because you'll you'll keep describing and explaining until midnight if I let you. So let's, yes, let's you, I will. I can I can drill straight to it. So I sit down to play with you. Yeah. What do I do? Um. So the the you mean if you play as a detective? What are my options? Well, who, All I did. Well, was the was options are being so the what so the the roles there's two there's two roles there's a keeper of secrets and there's a player detective. This is what I call them. So. The uh, Keeper of Secrets is, it's for two, three, four, I guess you can play it in two people, but it's not designed as a two person game. Got it. Okay. So it's designed as a, I got it. I got it. as a I three plus I'm, person I'm game. Playing as a detective. I sit down, I know nothing. But, what are you telling me? Right. So I, I, just to clarify, I think it can be played as a two person game, but it's also designed as a two person yeah. game. Okay. Right. Rabbit hole. I said two person and you, and. Right, right. Um, but in any case, um, you, um, so the, the thing that I'm trying to uh, point out, you, you, you use this detective to kind of explore the current situation. So you uh, situate the character uh, in various scenes, 
uh, you can direct uh, to an extent uh, suggest. Okay, I'm, I'm lost, man. Yeah. I'm sitting at your table Sorry. and I have no idea. I don't want to know what I can do eventually. I want to know okay, what okay. I do now. Um, what do you do now? Uh, you're saying this detective, what they try to find, who they uh, interrogate, what they explore, um, and eventually when characters start moving against him or her, what they try to uh, make of the current you're, situation. Again, you're describing later play. I'm okay. sitting here, I say, what do I do? Don't yeah. tell me what I do in a scene later. What do I do now? I've so got we are... a paper and a pencil. I've got nothing. Okay. Um, I guess the... So I've... Um... It depends. So we we talk together, right? And we describe a situation um, until and have I you, have you told me like when are we are we in Victorian England? Or are we? So the let's assume that we're running the adventure. We are yeah. we are in sort of a medieval setting. Okay, okay, for sure. Okay. We're in a medieval setting. Yes. Uh, and there we are in a uh, sort of a, a Liechtenstein inspired principate but that has Romanian language and culture. And there's a treaty going on between two nations. I'm going to leave it at that. Um, a, a murder has already occurred when play starts, or whatever crime is supposed to be detected has already occurred. So there's no playing through that, right? right? That's already in the past. That's in the backstory. Um, and the if there are multiple detectives, they are already in a group. They are already collaborating. There's no, uh, at the beginning at least, um, there's no kind of working against one another or there's an assumption of like knowledge and, and, and then these detectives are not connected to the uh, crime. They are not personally connected. They are some sort of um, important person or even not particularly important, but they have been selected somehow to do this and they want to, Excellent. important. Right. So, so they I'm want... I'm playing one of let's say three detectives. Yes. Um, and uh, let's say you're playing the nun. We have a nun. Okay. You'll love it. <laughs> we have a nun, and she's um, she's uh, we have, we have three gens now. Uh, she has uh, three traits. Uh, she has a health of three, and a uh, um, she has there's two stats. There's health. And um, re, um, sorry, re, how is it called? Uh, the um, s social power, how is that called in English? Sorry, um, status, rep reputation, yes, okay. status and reputation, yes. So she has a status of six and the health of three. Uh, and you have three traits one is uh, uh, botanical knowledge, second is reading into the soul of people, and the third one is uh, poking your nose without being noticed. So, um, and we can get at how that interacts with mechanics later, but uh, you are part of a group of people that has been selected to figure out what's going on, because otherwise the treaty goes to shit, uh, no, and it. all of the people involved, yeah. So, so here we go. We, we start playing. What mm -hmm. is it that, uh... okay. What is it that if okay, you remember my my chart, right? Here I'm gonna. Give uh, you you have many charts. Yes, I'm gonna give you the <laughs> chart that I was sternly informed. In fact, I will go so far as to say, I will give you the chart that I was told threatened. In fact. Oh no. Must be in every course I teach. Right. And so I'm pulling it up now. Is that the one with the situation? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, okay. I figured no, figured that was the case. Right now, okay. One of the points I make is that in a given game, mm -hmm. you will find concentrated procedures somewhere in the in, in this chart. Yes. But where it appears in that chart is really, really, really different. Mm -hmm. um, and it just yeah. so happens that I was contrasting the pool and cold soldier recently mm -hmm. um, and I pointed out that in the pool the concentrated procedure is found exclusively in those little black arrows and yeah and this is in my game as well yeah and, and there you go well, that's what I'm asking you and um 
and those little black arrows are uh, there can be many. You know, I mean, don't you're not limited to just one mm -hmm. scene, and they can be uh, and and basically everything else proceeds off of those. I'm not saying there are mm -hmm. no procedures for any of the others. There always are. It's just that they're not particularly mm -hmm. concentrated or constrained. I mean, there's not a lot. Yeah. They're not. They're not. There's not a so, lot of formal effort in those levels. It's just somebody's decision at some point and in some way. Yeah. Um, so I have uh, uh, actually a procedure for the big black arrows that is not from the pool. It's a thing that I invented. I don't even know where the fuck it came from. That's okay. Um, what is it? So. Uh, so it's that the situation has a so there's a time resource uh, and it can be spent based on a role and whenever the role fails um the resources spent diminishes by one and then when that it's shared by every detective and when that happens like there are certain events that come to pass there they don't have to come to pass exactly like it's written but the the way that it's written is like how it comes to pass if you know the detectives don't interfere with it so essentially successes oh, sorry other things also by time yes uh yeah if you if the time runs out then the entire scenario fails because the it just becomes untenable to uh, so you could you could solve it but there's no point to it i actually think i know where uh where this might have some antecedent whether it's a direct influence or not doesn't matter but it's but it's just worth giving credit where it's due. The game, the Italian game, uh, B movie, has something like this. I have not played it ever or read it. Yeah, I'm not, um, I'm not interested in it as a whether you know, aha, you got it from here. That's not my point. Yeah, yeah. I'm just so that the, about other games. Just that's all. So that that was kind of my way to kind of reminding uh, and constraining the fact that the situation needs to be always moving. Right. Right. Um, obviously, that's not the only way that it will be moving. Uh, even also outside of scene, so in in kind of in a sort of a everything that happens in a scene still suffers happening in other places off screen, right? That's what a situation all the time. Absolutely. Yeah, and this is my way of like constraining that certain parts, certain things are part of sort of a countdown of stuff that then ends in the uh, because I wanted to have a failure condition, right? I wanted this to be sort some sort of Partially a challenge, in the sense that it's not um, the uh, the game. Uh, you 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 are not tested on your eloquence or your ability to spot clues or whatever. But once you have the information, uh, the game doesn't solve the thing for you. You need to figure it out. Uh, and if you don't, then things come out on their own, but in a way that you're not in control. Right. Right. Perfectly and so the if you, if you discover that there are the tiger assassins, then you yes. can go and deal with them on some terms of your own. But if you don't discover that yeah. there are tiger assassins, well, you'll discover it in a way that you don't like. No, I completely get that. Yeah. So, um so tell me more now about the little black arrows. It's very similar to the pool. The only thing that is uh, okay, not exactly, not exactly. Um, there's three roles in the game. There's explicitly no role for like just danger situation, right? Uh, that's if you want to elevate an object to a character, that's fine, just like in Sorcerer. But um, it, it's not dealt like the game doesn't have a role for that. Uh, so. The uh, conflicts, there are conflict roles, and those are always against characters. Right. Um, so it's character versus character, or characters being involved in the same scene. That's very similar to how you run uh, conflicts in the pool. The only difference is that uh, we have opposed roles. So the character the NPCs have also dice right. that are rolled by the keeper. So what are the other kinds of little black arrow roles? The other roles are the investigation investigation role. I would call this. This is not a conflict at all. This is just to determine uh, because there are there is stuff that is always discoverable. Uh, it's just about like how much you discover and the amount of clarity. Right. Like there's we're not hiding information from the player, but they might get more clarity on a certain situation if they get a good role on the investigation role in one case. And that's for searching rooms, interrogating suspects uh, and stuff like that. Um, and then there's the third role. Yep. Go ahead with the third one. And the third role is a resource role is whenever you're spending a resource, which is either time 
health or uh, status, status or reputation, uh, to see when you're when you're risking it in a roll to get extra dice, if you get if it diminishes by one. Right. So if you. So that's a, that's actually. Hold on just a moment. That. Yeah. Uh, dice. Hold on. I'm just taking notes. So. That, therefore, let's say I risk time to yeah. uh, to get some extra dice. And yes. If I fail, then I then then basically certain things in the big black arrows are advanced quicker than they might otherwise have been. Yes. Got it. So the the yes the the resource roll can be as a result of um, you risking dice in a investigation or a conflict role, or it can also just be called by the keeper. Usually as a choice, in certain situations, it can be forced by the keeper in, in the case yeah, you're like, uh, that makes sense. like time has time is passing in the fiction, so you need to roll for time, like right. to see if this let scenario me, advances, right? Let me show off my diagrams a little bit more. Yeah. So not all resource rolls, but resource rolls that risk time. Do you see how those actually provoke a goal error? Yeah, and the others don't. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Perfect. I think I'm yeah. getting it. This actually is looking really nice. The uh, the only other thing that that I would ask or want to know in order to be able to play this, um, or let's just say I'm playing it and having a great time, but should I be interested in? Would I be interested in the the processes? Um, what what sort of scope of preparation are we talking about? Clearly, you've got your dynamic situation with active entities, and clearly you have a killing or some yeah. other dreadful thing that has happened. So you certainly have a culprit and quite a bit of backstory about that. It seems like a fair amount, but not. It's a lot right now. We're trying, no, we're trying to reduce it, but right now it's a lot. Um, we're trying to synthesize it into the minimal amount necessary, but right now it's very high prep. That's the one thing that. On scope of prep. Uh... And this is why the that part of the game is not part of the playtest document because we're just giving out the adventure that we wrote. Right. Because we haven't synthesized it yet to the minimal amount necessary. Right. right. So it's the thing we're going to be working on during playtest. 